Well, hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Business Spotlight. I am Scott McMeans with Action Coach. I am honored today to be joined by Ethan Holmes from Holmes Mouth-Watering Applesauce. Great business. I'd love to hear more about it. What we're going to do today is we're going to get a chance to listen to Ethan and his uh, experiences so far, the journey he's been on. But before we get into that, Ethan, I'm going to turn the microphone and the camera over to you. Introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about your business and how you got to be sitting in that seat today. All right. Exactly. So welcome, Ethan. Thank you so much for having me, Scott. My name is Ethan Holmes. I'm from Shaker Heights, Ohio, and I'm the founder and CEO of Holmes Mouth Watering. Um, we create all natural home style inspired applesauce and real fruit products. Um, our current newest line is actually a 3.2 ounce pouch, as you see here. Um, all of our products are, again, all natural. All we use is uh, real fruit and available in three flavors, original apple pie, cinnamon, and strawberry peach. I actually came up with the concept when I was 15 years old. Um, the year is 2008. Um, I'm 30 now, but uh, my grandfather showed me how to make applesauce at 15. And I said, wow, you know, this is a product I've never really explored before. Let me create my own recipe. Let me bottle it. Um, eventually, it was able to launch in the market in 2015 um, at a grocery store called Heinen's, um, 23 locations in Ohio and Illinois. And that grew credibility to Giant Eagle, Kroger, Whole Foods, and several others. Um, so that's a little bit about my story. There's been a lot more um, that has progressed since then. Ethan, that's outstanding. Thank How you. does a guy at 15 get interested in entrepreneurship simply because he spent time with his grandfather learning how to make applesauce. That is Great an question. amazing story. <laughs> Definitely. Well, I always had this entrepreneurial bug, I'd say. Um, I would always find entrepreneur magazines um, in the library at school and say, wow, I kind of want to be like that person. Um, they're their own boss. You know, they have that freedom and they're following their dreams. Um, I just didn't know exactly what business I would start. And I actually got a book called Realionaire. Um, kind of like millionaire, but real in the beginning. And it told the story of a guy named Far Gray. Um, he was about 15 years old, maybe 14, 15, a young minority from Illinois who had created a million dollar business. And I said, wow, you know, if he can do this, and it was kind of a self-help book, um, then I can do the same. You know, I followed the steps in the book, eventually, you know, led me on my own path and saying, okay, maybe I should look at food. And I remember the first product I ever created was a chocolate bar. Um, I went on YouTube, learned how to make chocolate bars, got a mold on Amazon, melted the chocolate, put little pretzel bites in it, packaged it and called it Nom Nom Bars, kind of like Cookie Monster, you know, like Nom 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 and um, <laughs> went to school and tried to sell them. I had like a, a dress shirt, my dad's dress shirt, one of his ties and said, $5 Nom Nom Bars, come and get them. And everybody said, hey, Ethan, I'm not giving you my last $5. I'm, I'm, I'm a student and hey, these don't taste very good, Ethan, maybe go back to the kitchen and I remember feeling pretty bad. I call that my first failure. But um, I remember going in my mom's kitchen in Shaker Heights and seeing on the counter a jar of Mott's applesauce. And we won't talk about them again. But just seeing that inspired me um, to say, hey, applesauce, it's a product that adults eat, children eat. Why not throw my hat in the ring and try that? I love it. So you don't have, you don't have chocolate bars as part of your product portfolio yeah. anymore. Correct. Yeah, we made a pivot. Hundred <laughs> percent. Smart move. Smart move. Because right. it seems to be doing quite well for you. Thank so, you. you've tested and measured chocolate and pretzels. Didn't necessarily right. go the way you wanted to. Walk me through going from grandpa's recipe and learning how to make it to finally getting three point two ounce packages that look amazing. So, how do Thank you go you from so much. starting to where you are right now? Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. So where I started, you know, it was really a 16 ounce jar, very artisan. Um, that process of R&D or research and development was very much, hey, let me try different varieties of apples. You know, let's see how Granny Smith does it. Maybe let's try a mix. Um, and I wind up actually speaking to a lot of orchards, um, Bauman, Patterson's Farm, um, Corey Hill. These are orchards lo located in Ohio. And I was able to learn from them. They said, well, Golden Delicious is probably the best apple for baking or creating pies or applesauce. So I said, let me try that. Um, I then tried apple juice with or water because that was what a lot of the other brands were doing. And then I actually heard a tip from someone that said, hey, I use apple cider when I make my applesauce at home. And I said, why don't I try apple cider? I mean, that led me again to creating this recipe formulation of apples, pears, which is a good substitute for sugar. We don't add any sugar and apple cider, which adds a lot of flavor. 
Once I had this recipe, I wrote it down on a piece of paper, put it on my refrigerator, and then tried different, you know, batches in order to complete it to make it perfect. I can tell you my family was tired of eating it. They're like, hey, then enough applesauce. <laughs> this is the third I've had this week. And I always tell people, my parents eventually cut me off financially. They said, hey, Ethan, you're getting $30 from us every other week for apples or from Giant Eagle. You know, you got to figure something out. And I remember Christmas was coming up. And so I actually put on my Christmas list a big bushel of apples. That's what I want for Christmas. And uh, I remember going back to school and everybody's like, oh, Ethan, what'd you get for Christmas? I was like, uh, apples. And they're like, oh, you got a new iPod and a new iPhone? And I remember saying, uh, no, the fruit. Uh, so that's that's how passionate I was about just getting this to market, for sure. I love it. Thank I you. love it. <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> I don't mean, to, don't mean to chuckle, but you actually got what you wanted for Christmas, which is a good thing. So mom and right. dad take care of you, which is great. Exactly. Great parents. <laughs> <laughs> and for the last now, what, 15 years, you've been working with yep. uh, Homes of Moth Watering? So... so Talk to me about your success, okay? Where, like you maybe made, I mentioned, you are in Heinen's, which is a great right. store, Giant Eagle, uh, Kroger's, and some others. So what does your distribution look like now? Definitely. And what kind of movement do you have as far as product? I bet she expanded, um, raised some capital, about a little over half a million to introduce these. This cost about $100,000, all the packaging, um, then we found a new manufacturer actually based internationally in South America. So all this applesauce is now made in Chile. Ethan, why don't you just tell us a little bit about your distribution? Okay, I'm thinking about the different locations. Again, Heinen's, Giant Eagle, Kroger. What other stores are you av available in? And what locations or what geographic area do you cover? Primarily, we're sold throughout the Midwest. We're in Ohio, Indiana, Kentucky. Um, we're also expanding to Illinois and recently New York and New Jersey. Actually, the, by the end of this month, um, some of our largest retailers are Walmart, Giant Eagle, Heinen's. Um, we're in Meyer. Uh, we're also expanding to uh, the Fresh Market. Um, so we'll be about in about 60 of their locations by May. So um, right now, again, a variety of different accounts. We just got into the Progressive Ballpark, and we're now the official applesauce of the Cleveland Guardians. Um, so we just made that announcement this morning. So we're also looking at food service, concessions. But again, right now, we have a really strong footprint um, in grocery in the Midwest. Ethan, that is outstanding. Thank you. Now, I'm going to go out on a limb and say the applesauce is mouthwatering. It's Correct. delicious. I'll get you right? samples so you can try. <laughs> sure. What is it that has allowed you to get such a strong, wide, and very deep distribution model? Not right. easy thing to do to become the official applesauce of the Cleveland Guardian. So I know they don't do that willy-nilly. Right. I, I have to ask the question, how is it that you got such a strong distribution is it because of your reputation, the taste, you you out there doing it? What efforts have led you to the yeah. distribution you have today? I'd say number one, our success came from myself just kind of being out there, being the face, you know, Walmart. I met with the buyer for probably almost six months working with him to, you know, go from where we were in these artisan 16 ounce jars to this shelf stable single serve package and being able to work with him on pricing. You know, the guardians, they actually reached out to us you know, saw the things we were doing in the community. So being, you know, um, out there showing people that you exist, helping students, all of that kind of adds up. You never know who's watching. Um, lastly, just building strong partnerships. You know, I've pitched in so many different rooms at Coca-Cola in Atlanta, um, in Colorado, through the Hirschberg Network, which is, you know, tons of investors in the CPG space. And all of those experiences led me to building great partnerships that have helped me, you know, open those doors. Um, help me with pricing, you know, product development, and being able to approach those conversations. That's outstanding, man. What a what a success story, literally from the kitchen <laughs> to a boardroom. And absolutely, yeah, amazing trajectory. And I, I, I give you kudos on that. Have to ask yeah, your organization. Mm -hmm, I'm right. sorry. I can talk about sales as well. That's financials, anything like that as well. You know, um, I don't want to get into the financials. You're okay. you're successful. We know that. I don't want to. I don't want to give away the secret codes, right? Okay, okay. Um, I'm interested to know about the organization, right? Absolutely. Talk to me about homes in this, in a sense of how many people do you have on staff, right. where things are, are are headquartered, and the type of environment that it that exists within your organization. 
Absolutely, great question. So we're headquartered here in Cleveland. I'm um, still a very relatively small team. I mean, we keep a lean model where we work with a lot of regional distributors, brokers for some of our accounts, Walmart. We have a broker here located in Northeast Ohio. And it's about four of us currently that are managing, you know, operations, marketing, um, distribution, but we are looking to expand by the end of this year. So we're raising capital now and really looking to, to grow and create more jobs. Um, but again, very small at this time. No, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, the fact that people are going to listen to this, you might get a ton of resumes. So uh, <laughs> okay, that'd be great. We we still we we'll get be some sure now. to put the yeah we'll be sure to put the uh, the email and contact information in the description below so people get a chance. Okay. Um, what I'd like to ask you about the lessons that you have learned and some of the most profound lessons you've learned as you've built homes from literally the kitchen to the boardroom. How is it that um, You've learned what lessons have you learned that have made the yeah. most impact on you? Great question. I'd say number one, and I always share this with students. I'm in the classroom pretty much, you know, twice a month. Closed mouths do not get fed. Um, and so it's important to speak up. I remember Chibani Yogurt, you know, a billion dollar company. They have an incubator program. You know, the year was 2019 or end of 2019. We weren't doing so well as a company. We needed to pivot. Um, and they actually saw that I was bugging them on LinkedIn and sending them messages about their incubator. Hey, I'm from Cleveland. I make the best applesauce. Please choose me. And they actually called my phone and said, hey, Ethan, you've been chosen. We're going to give you $30,000, fly you to New York to work with our team. Um, and so that helped change my life and my trajectory. So I think it's really important to allow people to know you exist. Um, it's not that they have a vendetta against you or they're trying to ignore you, but a lot of times they just don't know your story or why you're important. Mm -hmm. um, number two, I'd say... You know, it's important to um, understand your business. You know, I spent all of my 20s, I'd say, really understanding applesauce, knowing all the competitors there, um, the category as a whole, the price point that is most successful. Um, now I'm in my 30s and I'm getting a better understanding of how to create a successful business. Um, but first, I really had to understand what am I selling, what will work and what won't, 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 what won't work. Sorry about that. Do I need to say that again? Kind of. You're good. You're sorry, good. You know, the tongue twist. Um, no, that's this you're giving a master class right now ethan to Definitely. people trying to understand how do i take a business and do something with it yeah you you read a book and that drove you to figure out okay this is what i need to do you followed a system and a process that's what it right. that's what it takes really absolutely and then the word i wrote down here is grind grind yeah persistent okay? yeah grind it out and it's interesting you met with a, different people and they helped you design the 3.2 shelf ready package it right. wasn't you just beating your head up against the wall you found the great partnerships Absolutely. and they helped you do what would be beneficial for both you and them they're going to sell more if it's shelf friendly you right. change and now all of a sudden your partnership exists what i love about that storyline is it allows people to understand not everything is transactional Absolutely. you should be able to go from a price point to we're both integrated together and partnering to make right. sure that you survive I right. survive and together we thrive. It's an amazing storyline. I really appreciate you taking us down that pathway because a lot of people struggle with what to do next. Right. And it's just, there's a system, follow the system, right? And get right. yourself into the right relationships. I love the and, fact you keep talking to, I'm sorry, um, about being in, in classrooms. I'm assuming right. you spend time with high school students explaining how you started your business. Walk me through a little bit of that. Definitely. So I currently work with uh, K through 12 uh, schools all throughout Ohio. We also have done some presentations in Kentucky, Indiana, uh, but we partner with an organization called Young Entrepreneur Institute. Um, they actually kind of like our middle person where they bring together these educators that are interested in having entrepreneurial education or teachings. Um, then I go in and do about an hour, hour and a half workshop. We feed the students. And we're teaching them the fundamentals of business. What is entrepreneurship? finding a problem in your life and coming up with a solution, um, you know, seeing opportunities. Mm -hmm. A lot of these youth, you know, they're right there with the trends. They see everything on social media, TikTok, you know, and they can brand themselves and become an influencer, create their own brand or business. So we're allowing them to see that it's possible. And it's great to hear from someone like myself, who's young, um, who's been able to do it. And um, they also like that they're getting something tangible like the applesauce. And a few of those yeah. presentations have actually led to the schools buying the applesauce for the cafeteria. So it's a great win-win to help the youth. Um, we also get some grant funding and then we're also, you know, promoting the brand in the process. I love it. And it's, 
it's bringing people into a world that they didn't know existed absolutely and allowing them to experience it without fear right right because most entrepreneurs i would suggest love what they do because they have the passion for it right but fear is the biggest reason why they don't expand absolutely. why they don't grow because they just don't know and what's literally on the other side of fear is all this great abundance that they can take advantage of and if you can eliminate the fear you get beyond it all of a sudden you have this world at your doorstep that you can do with anything you want you can take anything care of. you want exactly and i think it's i think it's awesome thank you so as we're talking about the good stuff mm -hmm. what are some of the challenges that challenges that ethan and holmes mouthwatering have had to deal with over the years or are currently dealing with that kind of allow people to learn okay yeah he's dealing with that too Right. I can learn from that. So walk me through or talk about some of the challenges you have and have Definitely. faced and overcome that people could benefit from. So let's say just being in the CPG space, which is consumer packaged goods, one of the number one problems you'll face is manufacturing. You know, when I first started in 2015, I was renting out a kitchen called the Cleveland Culinary Launch Kitchen, where I made applesauce with actually the help of students. They were paid a stipend. And that eventually, you know, we, we grew out of that space to working with contract manufacturers, you know, renting spaces throughout Cleveland, and it never worked out. You know, it was sustainability wise, maybe capacity, um, supply chain. So it was all these limitations that we faced being, you know, our own manufacturer. Then we started working again with some co-mans, which are manufacturers that will produce for you. And we faced challenges with pricing. You know, they had to add on their margin. Um, and then we weren't competitive on shelf. Um, we also needed to increase our volumes in order to resell price breaks. Mm -hmm. So those are some of the challenges I've had to face as a manufacturer. I'm still facing having the cash in order to, to pay for inventory, even though we haven't been paid from customers, is a, is a constant issue that a lot of entrepreneurs face. I'd also say, you know, going more into financials is just um, having that capital available. You know, finding yep. angel investors or family offices that are willing to, you know, invest in someone at the seed stage as they're getting started and having those conversations to be able to convince them to see the benefit, um, the value. So um, those are just two that are on the top of my mind. I can keep going for sure. But <laughs> well, the funny thing is you say only two. I listed down uh, four. Four. OK, OK. So okay. I can keep going. You can Manufacturing. Okay. You know, framing up your manufacturing, Absolutely. dealing with a co-manufacturer, your supply chain, pricing on the shelf, your cash flow slash capital. There's a lot right. going on there. Right? A lot of there. Yeah. And here's the thing. And I want people and I want the audience to understand this. No matter what the challenge is, it's something you can tackle, figure out and move forward with. You have mm -hmm. somehow found a very creative way to build relationships that allow you mm -hmm. to not only get what you need done for homes, but get what needs to be done for your partner. Absolutely. And because of that, people like, know, like, and trust you in a way that they're continuing to do business with you. If for whatever reason, you weren't very good at what you were doing, I doubt Heinen's, Giant Eagle, Target, right. any of those stores you mentioned would keep you on the shelf. Absolutely. So the partnership is, is, is vital, right? And I think when you're trying to get into consumer packaged goods, like you said, that's not an easy, that's not an easy market. Not at all. Yeah, but it's, it's so, challenging. And there's a lot of moving parts. You have to keep your consumers happy, you know, direct to consumer, mm -hmm. whether you're on Amazon, your website, walmart.com, as well as those retail partners, you know, so I'm emailing them weekly, if not bi-weekly, mm -hmm. I'm working with my brokers. A lot of it sometimes is putting pressure on those retailers just to say, hey, I'm still here, you know, you know, let's, let's make sure we're, <laughs> we're driving sales. Let's make sure you know that, you know, if you're doing a big promo in Black History Month, that we're actually right there front and center, you know, in this, in yeah. the uh, store. So um, definitely that's a big uh, component of being an entrepreneur. Well, you never stop selling yourself, which is exactly constant, right? Um, we have a couple minutes left. Okay. Okay. I'm going to ask you um, a final question because I think it's it's a question that kind of helps out, and it, I think you're going to have an easy time with this one, okay? Because you talk to you talk to students all the time, but I love to ask people that are successful mm -hmm. if you were to go back and sit on a park bench next to the 18 year old Ethan Holmes, mm -hmm. what would your advice be? Uh, I'd say, and I, I kind of answer this quickly, but I guess I'll say that again. My advice for young Ethan Holmes would be, you know, don't stop believing in yourself. You have something valuable here. 
um, and just do it. And I think that's usually my best advice for entrepreneurs, that fear will stop you. They'll, all those different things you're going through in your life, why have school, or maybe when I get older, maybe when I'm more financially secure, just do it. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and the sky's the limit. You know, and just one small example, um, I went to North, uh, New Jersey. You know, I spent all my money to go there probably a few months ago um, to a food show. It was an amusement park food show, and Disney World was there. And they went around to all these different tables, but when they tried my applesauce, they said, wow, here's a young guy, minority, great product. You know, let's make sure we try to get him into Disney World. And so I've been working with their team. And But again, there's no limitations to what you can do when, you, when you're really locked in, when you're pursuing your dreams. So... Um, I know that was a chopped up answer, but no, no, yeah, <laughs> Ethan, that is not a chopped up answer. That is a brilliant answer because you. you went from, I'm going to tell myself to don't stop believing in myself. I have value. Right. Don't let fear get in the way. And oh, by the way, I'm going to meet Mickey Mouse in right. 18 years. Exactly. What? Yeah. Right. You can do what it. a great, what a great success story. You literally have gone from i keep saying this the kitchen to the boardroom and now you're walking down broad uh broadway in uh disney world come on definitely and right now we're still waiting on that deal to close the biggest issue is they pay probably 15 cents less for their applesauce ours is a little bit more okay. but they are very much interested but again i never thought i'd be able to have a sales meeting with their team and have that opportunity you know 18 year old ethan never would have thought that was possible but yeah thank you well the fact that he gets a chance to listen to the present day, Ethan, I think he's going to live out his dreams because clearly you've done that. This is well, outstanding. Thank you. thank you, Scott. I appreciate no, it. I, I, I appreciate you being here on the show. And I, I want to say this is one of the most energized uh, interviews that I've done. It's one that literally tells a story of, I don't know what business I want to be in, but I know I'm good at this because me and my granddad did this together. Right. And all this, and you fast forward and again, you're you're trying to get Mickey Mouse to to eat your uh, your applesauce. It's an amazing story. <laughs> Thank you, appreciate that. And I wish you the best of luck with that. Thank you. Any so final much. words? Ah, uh, no. I just want to say, you know, to anybody out there watching, you can do it. Entrepreneurial, you know. I'll say that again. To anybody out there watching, you can do it. You know, being an entrepreneur is definitely obtainable as a career. Um, and you know, we all have something we're passionate about, and we all have a story that's worth telling. Just got to be able to format format that together, create a brand, and get it out to the world. So. Thank you. Ah, fantastic. I appreciate your time. Thank okay. you, everybody. Uh, any information you need will be in the description down below. Please okay. click, go where you need to, get get your hands on some Holmes mouthwatering. I think you're going to enjoy it. Please do. Thank you, Ethan. <laughs> Bye now. Bye.